Hello and welcome to this video where I've been asked to show how I've set up my remote controls. Um, I'm going to use Cubase and I have my sound card which is an RME, uh, Fireface 800. Uh, so I'm also going to route it to my RME total mix. Uh, and I'm going to use um, a software called Touch OSC. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not sponsored. There's no particular reason that I use that. It's just what I used. I, I like the price. I like the um, the, the usability and cross-platform uh, support. So I'm going to take you through it step by step. Um, the first thing I do is that I go to the Touch OSC website or Lemur or whatever software you choose to use, as long as it's Sense MIDI. Uh, in, in my case, in, in the way I've routed it. Um, so just go to the Touch OSC website, follow the instructions, download uh, the apps. You need the app for your uh, controller gear, which could be a cell phone or smartphone, or, of course, uh, an, an, a tablet or, or something. Um, that's one software you need. You also need the uh, bridge. Uh, which is kind of uh, the, the the software on the desktop that translates the information from your tablet to uh, to the door, uh, basically. So just go to the controller website, download everything according to the instructions, and just do what it says. Now the, there's a couple of things that we need to think of. Uh, first of all, how to hack your Total Mix, your RME interface. And to do that, I, I simply did whatever you do when you're in, in a state of wonder. You go to Google. So I Googled it and found an RME forum listing the, the media channels active, uh, being active on, on the uh, Fireface. So uh, we're going to get back to that later on. Uh, now we're going to go to uh, set up the controller. So basically what I've done here is that I've opened up the OSC editor, as you can see here, and I've made my patches, just importing buttons and uh, putting on labels and routing values. So in, in this sense, uh, when I write my values, I've done MIDI, uh, value, control, change, the channel I want to send it to, and the number, uh, the, the, the the kind of number that will be sent on that channel. Uh, now, this is kind of important to keep track on because this is what decides what function will be uh, executed later on. Uh, I will get back to that in a few seconds. So, uh, when we've done the patch, I'm going to show you more later on. Uh, we basically have it on our tablet. Uh, in my case, we open up the OSC tab, like here, and then you can see what I've controlled so far. I have my monitor control and, and file kind of configuration. I have uh, my media editor when I uh, work with MIDI. Uh, these tiers and so on. I'm, I'm going to do separate videos on, on these later on if if you want. Uh, or if there's something else I'm doing that you wonder if I can give you my input on how I do things, please just hit like and leave me a comment on what you need uh, and I'll see what I can do. Um, so basically here it is. Uh, I'm going to focus on this one today. Uh, because it sends both to my interface and to Cubase. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to open up the studio setup uh, in my door and we are going to choose a remote device. Now the first remote device is my Mackie control which is the one you see here. Uh, it's not Mackie uh, but it uses the Mackie control um, uh, framework. It's an Icon um, Platform Nano, 
which I kind of like. It fits my need right now. Um, and it has a set of controls already with, with the labels that you can change depending on which door you're using. So let's say I'm using Logic or Pro Tools, then I can take this overlay and shift it out for the correct one. Uh, in this case, I'm using Cubase, so I'm using the Cubase overlay. Um, that would be a, a different episode on how to set that one up. But what I can show you right here, right now, is that if you click the Mackie control here, you have uh, some user commands that you can set up. In this case, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and so on. Uh, and on this one, you find this on the yellow button. So you have red, green, blue, uh, purple, and yellow. So your yellow here is F1, F2, F3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, and so on. Um, so basically what I can do here is set up that my workspace 1 is on the first button and workspace 2 on the other. Now, uh, the shift plus F1 uh, is not that obvious on this control. Uh, so basically you have the shift on the purple channel here and the control here. So what you need to do then is you two need to take shift, pull it in while switching to the yellow, and then click what you need. So basically that is. So, so you can add a different layer here. The user A and user B, uh, those are... Oh, sorry, I pushed a button. <laughs> it responded. Well done. That's exactly what you should do. Um, going to do that later. So uh, user A and user B is uh, inputs that you have on the back uh, of the controller. We can insert a foot pedal or something to have two additional functions. So if I push the pedal, you get a function up. That's basically it for that control. Uh, the rest for a different episode. Or basically go on YouTube because uh, I Icon has films on that already. Um, so, uh, let's go to the Touch OAC control. What I do then is I open up uh, and add a new device here, and I choose a generic remote. Now, if I open that up, I can, on my own, select what I want to do. So, I'm just basically going to delete all this. Um, quite a few. And then I can use add. So basically what I can do here, I can type a name. Uh, let's say uh, mute. Uh, use it as a controller. I choose a media channel. For instance, 10, 1 as was the, the first button uh, on, on my uh, OSC uh, software. And what I'm going to do next is to choose the Touch OSC bridge. Now, this is a bridge that we downloaded from the website that translates from the controller to your door. So basically, that is your media input. So I'm going to choose it as an input as an, and as an output. Um, mostly you just need the input because when you push a button, it sends information into the program. But for instance, in, in this case where I have these faders, I also need media output because then the door can send the information of the faders in the door to my controller so they correspond and look the same. Um, that's basically the setup. Now, there's one thing here you should know, and that's it, that there is a bug in Cubase, which is annoying if you don't know it. But if you know it and work with it, um, you can live very well with it, I think. I've ever had any issues with it as long as I do what I should do, which is how to keep your programming. Well, uh, what you do here is you export the file and it will show up as an XML file with just data that it will bring in. 
Um, but the problem then is that if we just export the file and then open a new session and import it, it won't import. So what you need to do is you to save the file and have it in the program, you need to export. When you have done the export, you need to import the same file and click apply. So instead of just clicking save, you need three steps, export, import, apply. Then you have saved the XML file and you have done it in a way that will import again into the program. Uh, another issue that you should know is that if you have two buttons here, they may differ on their address. Uh, let's say this one is two, but they have the same name. Then you will note another bug, uh, another problem, because everything needs a separate name. So if those two are mute, it won't import. You will click the import, you will choose the file, but it won't open. So what you do then is that you go into the XML file. If you find yourself in that situation, you find these two entries in the list, and then you just delete one or change your name. So they have different names. And then you can go back in, into the program again and import. So it will work. It's just that every entry needs a separate name. The same applies if you like me, um, like to just add the channels you need and name it later on. Uh, you should note that an unnamed uh, entry, uh, which has no control name, is the same as having the same name as the other. So if you have two unnamed control controllers, it won't import. Uh, so what I did was again, I went into the XML document, I in that case, deleted those slots um, that had the same name and it imported perfectly again. So there's no problem as long as you know about it. So to save, export, import, apply. And to save a, a file that won't import, go into the XML document stored on your computer and just rename stuff so they don't have a different name. I also uh, found here on, on, on the VST 1 to 16 here that you can add uh, or rename them. But in, in my experience, it, it works best if you just use those that are here. So just leave them alone. It, it will save you a lot of time and effort. Okay, so that's basically the setup. Uh, now we just need to uh, imagine the controls. So I have the generic remote. Now I won't apply. This is what I'm using myself. I have the touch OSC bridge uh, set as input and output, and I have made controllers for all my files. So if I add here, um, I can just add, select a name, call it test right now, uh, select a new channel. And when I've added it here, I will see that it automatically appears here, not assigned. That's my new button. Um, so I'm going to choose, for instance, a command. Choose a function, for instance, add track. And then I can, let's say, add a folder track, which means what, that when I push the button that sends to me the channel 12, address 14, I will add a folder track. Uh, when I've done this again, I'm going to click export, import, apply. So basically that's it. So in, in the sense here now of how to do cooler stuff, uh, if I'm going to delete that again, um, we can go out of here and we can look at two other functions. Because one thing you can do is you can add already available commands in Cubase. Basically, we go to the edit menu and we choose key commands. So just by browsing here, you can see stuff you can do. Uh, let's say um, Windows Zones. You have a function that's called show next tab. 
that's good to know. That's something I may want to do. When I found that, I go back to the um, studio setup, and then I add a command, controller, MIDI code, and find my way to that code. So basically, I, I use the key commands to get inspiration on what I can find and what I can do. Uh, so I, I think this is a neat thing that you can do. Uh, another thing, uh, and now it's this is where it becomes fun, uh, I think, is if you go to the MIDI menu on top, you can't see it here on, this, on the screen because I've apparently I'm not screen sharing that, but on, on, on the top menu here, you can choose MIDI, and then you choose uh, logical editor. Now, now, now you see that this is grayed out, which means that we need to open a MIDI event here. Let's just write something here. With that added and selected, we have active. Oh, sorry. Need to open it up as well. Uh, just going to grab it from my other screen here. Uh, now we have a media file. I'm just going to add a note just for the sake of it. Now I can open the logical editor under the MIDI option in the menu. Um, so what what this is, is an interesting thing. Um, I would have to show you in a different video in, in that sense. But what you can do is to add commands relating to MIDI, for instance, if the note is, or, or if the entry is a note, and if you add here, um, it has, uh, let's say, property uh, set uh, event is selected for instance, then we can add a function. Uh, for instance, add uh, now, um, yeah, add six steps above, and then we can use insert, then we'll add a note, uh, one fifth above. Or we can use, um, sorry, auto saving, uh, big template, uh, small RAM. Um, I'm building a new computer just to explain that. Um, but basically, the, this is what you can do. You can insert a new core. You could multiply, which means that you're you're transposing the node and so on. Um, now, this is the logical editor. That is one thing we should remember now. Uh, the second thing, uh, as soon as this autosave is done and we can continue, there we are. Uh, so bas basically, what you do here, I've set a property here. Uh, I've done insert to add, uh, and I can save it as a preset. So for instance, insert note, for instance. Uh, there are videos on that online, so you can just check it up. Uh, okay, so I've saved that one. What I will notice now is that when I go back to the MIDI menu, I find all my logical presets available here. Uh, now I didn't save that one, so I won't find it in the list, but these are the other ones that I've done. Uh, for instance, instance, um, select every eighth note and so on. You can do the same for the project where you choose, uh, where, yeah, project logical editor. Um, this is basically the same, but it relates to the project. For instance, select tracks and, and so on. So it's not directly, um, uh, targeted at MIDI, it's for the project. But you do the same. You add functions uh, and operations, uh, delete, transform, select, for instance, and you save it. 
when you have saved it, you have it on the list. For instance, select every track that has the word choir uh, in its name. Then I can click that function and it will select all the tracks that had choir in its name. So that's a neat function. Uh, going back to the key commands, we're going to make magic of this because what we can do now is under the key commands, we can add macros. So add a new macro, uh, call it this uh, test right now. Uh, for instance, call that add triplet. This is where we have. And now I can find in my list here, for instance, uh, um, logical editor. And here you will find all my logical, media logical editor presets and all my project logical uh, editor presets. That done. So I can actually add these two macros. Uh, so in, for instance here, I have the logical preset, add 1 16th later, uh, reduce by 10%, navigate down, so on. So actually what this does is that I select a note and it adds a triplet with decaying velocity, uh, which is kind of neat. So then we have the logical editor presets, we have the project logical editor presets, and we have the macros. So what we are going to do now is click OK. We are going back to the studio setup and we're going to add a button here. Let's call it tent one. I won't save it anyway. Um, and command. And now we can choose logical here because here we can access our uh, presets in the logical uh, editor, and here we can access the pres presets of the project logical editor. And we find the list here. So here's my select choir that we looked at before. Additionally, you can look up macro, and you will have all your macros listed here. So here's the add triplet that we looked upon later before. So now you can actually set up uh, one button to perform complex operations uh, in a very neat way. Uh, now, be before we go on, uh, I want to direct to one uh, last issue in terms of media channels and addresses, because the software, the, the controller, will send the same media channel and address to both Cubase and uh, your uh, um, RME interface that I have here, which means that you can't have you use the same media channel and address for functions in Cubase as you do in your RME, your total mix. So that's where the uh, website comes in again. If you go back to the list that I found here on the forum, we can see, for instance, that on media channel one, uh, we can send notes to, to get gain these functions. Uh, opening up the OSC, uh, we change the function here to from the uh, from control change to note. And then we can choose, for instance, um, the global mute button is note A flat one. And then we add A flat one. Oh, sorry, that didn't work. Uh, then we can do it like this. Yeah, of course, because it's G sharp one. Okay. Like that. And then we'll add that function. Um, so that will tell me that MIDI channel one uh, and channel five, channel two, channel nine, so on, they are reserved for the interface. 
uh, and as you can see here, they are linked to my controller then. So that means basically that all the commands I send to Cubase will not be sent to mini channel one, two, five, nine, and so on. So basically what I've done here, as you can see, is that I've started sending uh, my uh, commands from my tablet to, to my door from channel 10 and on. So channel 10 until I run up, uh, I have 127 as always in MIDI. Uh, and I have channel 11 when all those 127 is uh, used up. And I have channel 12 after that and so on. So I just decided that from 10 onwards is uh, Cubase before 10 is my interface. So just keep track on your writing and it will work just fine. Uh, that is my experience. Um, so if you go here just to show how this works in, 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 um, in this instance, uh, I can have all these controls at the same place. So for instance, the, the, on my remote control here, the first button's here, control my interface and sets the, um, the input level. For instance, I've calibrated my system uh, here for 85 decibel levels uh, and, and, or C weighted um, slow uh, and 75, 73, 70, 60 and so on, just to keep track on it. I'm not going to push those buttons now to show you because then I will mute the microphone in which I speak uh, because I have my own uh, recording setup for, uh, for this session. But the rest of the buttons go to Cubase. Um, I think we'll leave this for um, another uh, episode to show that in detail, but this is how you set it up. So thank you for listening. Uh, if you liked it, press like or share or whatever, and let me know if you want me to make a new tutorial. So thank you for listening. Cheers.